Howdy guys, Kim here, Papa's Fixer Shop. So, day one of the new lathe. Um, last night I bolted it to the floor with eight half inch red heads, like five inches long into the six inch slab. Wired everything up, wired up the pump, and then like anything, first job I needed to do with the lathe was fix the lathe, but it's like really minor. I'll show you, but it's a plastic piece that goes right inside this door. It's kind of like a cam lock, and I don't like things rattling. You know, I closed it, tightened it up, and it snapped. So I'll give them that. Aside from that, this thing is, I mean, from my point of view, is amazing. It's fantastic. Um, there's a little bit of vibration coming from the gears. And I only know this because I am an absolute expert on manual gearboxes. I've, I was building them and taking them apart and building them in the 70s. So... Um, it sounds like something isn't quite the spec in there on one of the one of the shafts because I can feel a harmonic that is not the same RPM as the spindle, and it it comes in and goes away, it comes in and goes away. So when it's running really slow, I could feel it distinctly, almost like four or five gears that at one point when they went through their mesh. They're a little tight or something, and it made a bump. Which there could be dirt in there. Somebody could have put precision bearings in there without lining up the marks, and it's got a little bit of this or that. After running it all day, doing you know, I cut a bunch of steel. Well, not a bunch. I start off with a piece of mystery steel and was just amazed. This is the. I just threw it in there and. Um, turned it down. Didn't do anything. I just lined everything up and and then cut a little step. It's it's crazy good. Um, oh, that's a different piece. The piece of aluminum I made this out of, it was leaving a dang near mirror finish. And by the end of the day, it's quieted down. It's changed. So for me, it's breaking in. It's running in. I'm not going to concern myself with a vibration that I can perceive because my experience is I go to people and say do you feel that or hear that and most people are like no I thought that's perfect but so I'm a little more sensitive you know 50 years building maintaining repairing mechanisms that have bearings and shafts <laughs> You get it kind of in tune with it, but so this thing's crazy good. You can change the direction of the lead screw while it's running if you want to go back and forth without changing anything. It'll just go back the other direction. Um, and it's got, of course, it's gear head. There's a belt inside that you got to change to get the max speeds. So I'll put the pictures up. And then there's a pump down in here. I'm going to shut it off and then I'm going to take the camera and do a little walk around a little bit. I hate doing walk handhelds because I shake everything up, but bear with me. Hold on.
There it is, my new lathe. Okay, so here's the lathe. It's got cabinets. Cabinets are kind of nice. Release it, open it up. And I got the four jaw chuck in there and the, the steady rest and the follow rest. Over here on the other side, is the coolant pump and tank and it's a metal it's probably steel because it's painted but it's a metal box with a little um, pump the only thing on the pump that's in English is the name it says let's it say double phase pump <laughs> so at least there's a wiring diagram you have to wire that yourself or get somebody that knows how to do it I know how to do it then inside here is the pulley and you just loosen a couple of bolts pivot it change the belt and the weight of it will go back on it and you tighten it and then you're going to do threading you change gears all these gears came with it as well as these other chucks or the other jaws for the three jaw and of course, in the back is the power, all right? Now I have to have this door shut because it's interlocked. This has to be down. And then speeds and everything. If I turn the pump on, see? Now when you push start, it sets it up. And it's just like a big lathe. There's a knob down here. And go the other way. See if you go in there. That's low. And this guy. So, look 
got this guy going. There's no counterclockwise from this direction. This lever here. Advancing the carriage. So I stop it, right? And if I go the other way with it forward, now it's feeding in the cross slider. And that, I mean, it works beautifully. So, cam lock on a steady rest. Adjust it here. Packed it in there. Now, the tray on this guy from here to here is 54 inches. And it's about 18 front to back. But if you measure the cross, the knobs and everything, all the handles, it takes up a good 26 27 inches of width and then it's three feet high right about here this is three feet off the floor and so this light that was another nice it's an LED light that all came with it so yeah very nice Okay, so there it is. First day I had the lathe, I used it to fix it, fix the lathe. This kind of goes in like this. This one's kind of hard to get in and out because it's broken plastic. But it turns around and locks the door where the change gears are. And of course it's plastic and it broke immediately. So I made one out of aluminum. Use a lathe to turn it all down and then this profile here, I did that by hand. I'd stick a bolt through it and I did it on the, on the bandsaw and got it close and then a little belt sander polished it up. So now this guy Goes right there. Oh, yeah, that's the other part. It's a tapered bushing or a tapered pin. Sorry, let's see. So there it is. It's about to come through. 
So I'm about to see if it's going to fit and see if I have to ream this hole out. I don't have a tapered ream, so I'll just make the other hole a little bigger if I have to. It's all good. It works.